Real quick, just before the video starts, I want to give a shout out to Riders DX because I realized after recording, he's already done this video. He did it four months ago and I basically stole his idea. One of the things he does on his channel is he'll take a look at the worst reviewed games in a specific game series. One of them being Crash, of course, I'd definitely recommend watching that one, but he's also done one for Spyro too. I know a lot of people on this channel are interested in Spyro as well as other things that he does on the channel, so definitely check him out. I feel like if you like my channel, you'll probably like Riders DX, so yeah, sorry for stealing your idea. Welcome back to another video everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Crash Bandicoot games that have the worst review scores. I thought this would be interesting because Crash is no stranger to poorly reviewed games. There's so many games in the series that fans have mixed opinions on, I don't think there's any that everybody hates apart from Crash Boom Bang. Like yeah, a lot of people hate these games, but a lot of people also love them. And so that's why I think it would be interesting to see which one actually has the lowest review score. Now I'm going to be splitting this up. First we're going to take a look at the console games, not just the main series, but anything that released on console. Then we'll look at the handheld entries and at the end we'll see who the overall winner is or loser I suppose. We can play a little game as we go through as well. I'm going to guess what score each game has on Metacritic before I check what it actually is. You can do the same thing down below if you want in the comments, just don't cheat. Also I just want to say if you're a fan of any of these games, that's fine. I like most of them too, but that doesn't mean I think they're perfect games. I'm an average tag team racing enjoyer. I own four copies of it, but I already know that game's going to have a low score and I understand why as well. One more thing, I'll be looking at the scores for the PlayStation version of the games. The scores do vary depending on the platform. Generally they're around the same same with a few exceptions, but to keep things simple, that's where it all started, that's what I'm going to pick for the platform. That being said, let's start off with Crash Bash. The reason I'm skipping the original trilogy and Team Racing is because they were really good games. Pretty much everyone will agree that they are good games, but when it comes to Crash Bash, Eh. It's the first game in the series that wasn't developed by Naughty Dog and it was a party game that got repetitive very quickly. I enjoyed the game for a bit but because it repeats the same mini games in each warp room I'm assuming that affected the review scores quite a bit. I think Crash Bash got a 70 overall. Whoa! 68. I mean, that was pretty much spot on. 68 isn't the greatest score, but hey, at least it scored better than Mario Party 10. Next up, we have The Wrath of Cortex. Now, this was basically Crash Bandicoot 4. It followed the same formula as the original games, and it was the first Crash game for the PS2. The problem is, it felt like it was trying too hard to be those original games, specifically Crash Warped. It had way too many vehicle levels, which wouldn't have been as much of a problem if they were actually good. The character models and cutscenes looked very strange. They all looked like potatoes, which isn't really what you expect from a next-gen game. But the game had its highlights and the music was brilliant, so I'm going to guess that this scored higher than Crash Bash in the 70s, around 74. Whoa! Oh god, how wrong was I? It scored lower than Crash Bash. I mean, look, I understand the problems Wrath of Cortex has, but even I didn't expect that. One thing I missed out were the loading times. I usually forget that problem since it was fixed with later releases on different platforms. I looked at the score for the Xbox platform and it got a 70, so a bit better than the PS2 version. It didn't just score low because of the load times, though. A lot of people think it's just more of the same. It didn't really bring anything new to the table. Next up, we have Crash Nitro Kart. Now, I really enjoyed this game, but most people will agree it wasn't as good as the original CTR. The controls were clunky, and worse than they were in the original game, Adventure Mode followed the exact same formula, similar track themes. Despite all of that, I still have a blast playing Nitro Kart, and again, the soundtrack is brilliant. I'm gonna guess this one has a 75 rating. I thought at the very least it will be in the 70s. As expected, most reviews say that it's not as good as CTR, and a lot of them say that it doesn't do much to improve upon it. Other reviews make it clear that the kart racing genre was getting a bit stale at the time as well. Others say it's decent, but it's no Mario Kart, which I feel like people say about every kart racing game that isn't Mario Kart. Hey, let's look on the bright side. This is the highest score that we've seen so far. Next up, Crash to Insanity. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this one. Crash and Cortex team up as they work their way through open levels for the first time. Gone was the crate counter and linear levels. Well, they're still linear, but you have way more room to explore here. Now, as much as I like this game, there's no denying it's broken and unfinished. Missing sound effects, glitches everywhere. You can tell something is off when you play this game. That's because it was scrapped a decent way through development, but they still had to squirt something out for the original deadline. So it's no surprise that it turned out like this. If the others scored from 65 to 70, I'm going to say this received a 60. Whoa! You know, that's not as bad as I thought, and I'm happy about that. If only they had more time to work on Twin Sanity, I feel like it would have been a lot higher. Next up, Crash Tag Team Racing. They read the reviews about Crash Nitro Kart's controls being clunkier than CTR and said, let's fuck it up even more. This game is half racing, half platforming, and to me, I've always looked at it as a platformer first, racing game second. Unfortunately, it was marketed as a racing game and had a very similar name to the original PS1 classic. Now, if you're going to do that, you want to make the racing good. It, it's not, though, so... 
yeah. Driving just doesn't work very well. Not only does it feel stiff to drive, but the gameplay is flawed. You can combine your vehicle with someone, they drive you while you're gunning everyone down. When you run out of ammo, you can disconnect from the driver and reconnect instantly to gain all of your ammo back. Keep doing that until three laps have passed and you'll win. I love this game's setting though. You're in a theme park and have multiple theme worlds to explore, play mini games, compete in the battle and stunt arenas. I love this game and I really enjoyed the theme park theme. The racing is just okay to me. I don't mind it, but it's definitely going to impact the score. I'm going to guess this has a 60. Whoa! Oh! A 66. Interesting. This scored the same as The Wrath of Cortex. I feel like the way people talk about this game all the time clouded my expectations there. I always see people crap on it, so I just expected the score to be a lot lower than 66. Next up, Crash of the Titans. They turn Crash into a beat em up. I like this game, but I have to say it does get repetitive, and those areas where they make you fight the same enemy over and over before allowing you to move on just for the sake of making the game longer, sucks balls. From what I know, the game did sell quite well, and it is loved by many people, so I'll say 65. It's actually the highs so far coming in at 70. I was actually spot on with the score if we count the 360 version of the game, which is actually the one that I played the most, so technically I deserve the win here. Next up, Mind Over Mutant. What can I say? It's the not as good sequel to Titans. If that received a 70, this has to be a 65. 70 well, there it is, everyone. Mind Over Mutant is the highest reviewed post Naughty Dog Crash game before the Grand Return in 2017, of course. It only got a 60 on the Xbox, though, so it really does seem to vary depending on the platform. Here are the final results for the console Crash games. Now, for the handheld games, I can't say much about them because I haven't actually played most of them, so I'll put those up on the screen now just as they are. If they're not on there, then I couldn't find them on Metacritic, but there's one that I'm very curious about Crash Boom Bang on the Nintendo DS. I am straight up gonna say this one got a 25. Hey, could have been worse. Could have been a 36. Right, so I believe that is all of the scores for the mixed Crash Bandicoot games. Of course, I didn't include the originals, and I didn't include anything from 2017 onwards, because they were all really good. It's these games we looked at today where things seem to take a bit of a dip. I actually can't believe Mind of Mutant took the win here for the console games. But let me know what you think down below. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Definitely subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you all in my next video.